What is up everybody? Crypto Noah back with another fundamental analysis video. In this video, we're going to be covering a protocol that fits within a major narrative and a derivative narrative within that narrative. The narrative I'm referring to is real world assets. Guys, I made a video talking about what I believe will be the top four narratives going into this 2024 crypto bull market. Real world assets is number one. If you want to see the rest, go and watch the video. That's on my personal channel, Crypto Noah. But I feel like real world assets is going to be the top narrative because although it's not the sexiest, I think it'll bring in the most money because it's literally helping institutions connect on chain and be able to finance different assets and just increase liquidity because blockchain technology can do things that you know, traditional databases just haven't been able to do. Under that narrative is the narrative of private credit. I made another video on my personal channel covering this whole topic in depth. Basically, within crypto, you can only get access to over collateralized lending. And the whole point of getting a loan is to get access to money that you didn't have before. So imagine if you want to get a mortgage for 300K and you have to put down 250K to borrow the rest. That's impractical. That's not how people in the real world borrow money and it's damn sure not how institutions borrow money. So the project we're going to be covering centrifuge is trying to solve that in their own way. So in this video, we're going to be covering centrifuge in depth. We're going to go through their white paper. We're going to go through their docs. I'm going to read the important things and translate it so that it's you know easy for you to understand. We're gonna cover the tokenomics. We're gonna see how they stack up against their competitors. And then at the end, I'm gonna do a platform walkthrough. Having that said, before I get started, this is not financial advice. These are my own opinions, my own research. Use this channel as a starting point, but always do your own research. Now, I'm gonna give you everything I can in this video, guys but still go and do your own research. And if you stick around to the end, I'm gonna give you guys a little surprise heads up on what's to come, a little part two for this video. So definitely stick around to the end. So without further ado, let's jump straight into the docs and start off with what Centrifuge is. So the summary says, Centrifuge is the infrastructure that facilitates the decentralized financing of real world assets natively on chain, creating a fully transparent market which allows borrowers and lenders to transact without unnecessary intermediaries. Asset pools are fully collateralized, liquidity providers have legal recourse, and the protocol is asset class agnostic, which means they don't give a damn about what the asset is to a certain extent, with pools for assets spanning mortgages, invoices, micro lending, and consumer finance. Ultimately, the protocol aims to lower the cost of borrowing for businesses around the world, while providing DeFi users with a stable source of collateralized yield that's uncorrelated to the volatile crypto markets. Guys, I don't know if you guys realize this, but did you guys know that in the United States, the number one collateral for like entrepreneurs to borrow money is to borrow against their home? Now, going to mainstream banks, and I talked about this in the video that I referenced in the beginning, credit markets are almost like monopolized. So the cost to borrow money is extremely, extremely high when you do it you know, the traditional means. On top of that, when you go to banks and these other firms that have like brick and mortar businesses, ATMs, their customer acquisition cost is higher. So they couldn't lower their rates even if they wanted to. So they're coming in and solving a huge problem that not a lot of people realize, not just here in America, but globally. You know, another thing is interest rates are really high as well. So that's another thing that's keeping rates high. So when it comes to crypto companies, it's hard for them to borrow money, especially with the BlockFi and the Celsius and the three arrows capital, like that whole cascade, it left a bad taste in everyone's mouth. So crypto companies, this up and coming industry, they don't have anywhere to go to be able to borrow money. Now I talked about the problem with over collateralized lending and that, you know, having to put up collateral and then borrow it. And the whole point is to get access to capital that you didn't have. Centrifuge is kind of like a hybrid approach. Like I covered Maple and they, you know, take you through credit checks and all these KYC and AML off chain. But Centrifuge is, is kind of like in the middle of that. They're not doing over collateralized lending because if you want to borrow USDC, you're not having to put USDC or ETH as collateral, you're collateralizing an illiquid asset or something that you just can't go and sell easily, like real estate, like an invoice. So this is something that you don't mind borrowing against because it, the collateral isn't tied to what you're borrowing. So like, for example, the problem in crypto is if I want to go borrow Bitcoin, get an over collateralized loan and Bitcoin or Ethereum is my collateral. If those drop, 
it's going to increase my chances of getting liquidated because my collateral and what I'm borrowing is tied together. I've been telling people for a long time, the biggest reason, one of the biggest reasons why we saw this bear market was one, because of the bad actors in the CFI space, centralized finance space, but also for selling because people were over leveraged and the collateral that they were using was crypto. Imagine if your collateral was an invoice or a stock or an on-chain treasury. Those things aren't tied to crypto, so way less people would have gotten liquidated and the market wouldn't have dropped as much. Let's keep going here. So it says their mission here is to harness the power of blockchain technology and make finance accessible to all. Credit is essential for a functioning economy and is a key driver for business growth, yet only the largest businesses get direct access to liquid capital markets. The same access is not available to small and medium sized enterprises or SMEs. The average cost of capital for the global 2000 is 1% compared to 15% for SMEs. The lack of an open and transparent marketplace denies SMEs access to competitive borrowing rates. Centrifuge, however, uses blockchain technology to solve this problem. The key property of a blockchain is that it enables multiple parties to achieve agreement on shared information without a trusted intermediary. Finance and real world assets requires many intermediaries to function right now, for example, the short list of parties involved in the bond issuance includes a lead manager, managers, lawyers, pan agents, fiscal agents, auditors, registrars, transfer agents, calculation agents, listing agents, rating agents, processing agents, agent party! All of these intermediaries add to the upfront and ongoing costs, increasing the barriers for small and medium enterprises compared to large corporations. If the finance and process is coded into a blockchain, the reliance on these intermediaries can be greatly reduced, leading to a more open, transparent, and efficient access to finance. So now let's dive into their features. It says this, it says here the foundation of the protocol is centrifuge chain, a layer one chain purpose built for finance and RWAs. The native token of the centrifuge chain is CFG. I'll show you guys how to buy it at the end. It's used as an on-chain governance mechanism that empowers CFG holders to manage the development of the centrifuge protocol. RWAs are tokenized as NFTs to create an on-chain representation and are linked to detailed off-chain data. I always say, you can build a centralized protocol on top of decentralized technology, but you can't build a decentralized protocol on top of centralized technology. This is a centralized protocol built on decentralized technology. All right, let's keep going further. Tokenization and private data sharing. So to create an on-chain representation of the off-chain, like we just talked about, real-world asset, each borrower mints an NFT. The NFT contains all the important information required for pricing, financing, and valuation, and can be locked into pools on the Centrifuge protocol as representations of the collateral used for financing. So if you have some kind of machine that you're borrowing against or an invoice like they talked about, you can tag that with an NFT. All of the data is recorded off chain, but also recorded on the NFT. So that way you know the value of that thing that you're collateralizing to borrow against. However, any on-chain information attached to these NFTs will be public by default. With real world use cases, investors often require access to extensive information about assets, but the issuer does not normally make this public information. The private data layer of the Centrifuge protocol actually solves this. It allows issuers and investors to access additional asset data securely and privately. So if someone wants to borrow money from you and they're interested, you can choose to share it with them versus just sharing Sharing it with everyone. You can just share it to people who are interested in, you know, getting what you want, which is a loan. All right, let's move on to on-chain securitization. So it says here, by nature, RWAs are often illiquid and can have maturities up to several years. This makes investing into individual assets extremely difficult. A way to solve this is by pooling multiple assets together and allowing investors to provide financing for this pool instead of each asset individually. And I think this is where Populous fucked up. Populous was a, prop, a popular invoice factoring program, but they allow individual people to pick the invoices that they you know, did factoring for versus them allowing to put it in a pool and people just put money in and then the protocol determines it. Like I feel like they just made it harder. Anyway, this is called securitization and is a well-established concept in the TradFi market. Like we talked about earlier, after, after an asset is tokenized and an NFT is minted on chain, the NFT is used as a representation of the off-chain collateral for the asset linked to an investment pool. And it shows you a visualization here. The asset is priced and the issuer borrows liquidity from the pool. Over time, the accruing debt per asset is repaid by the issuer, including interest payments and principal repayments. Together, this creates on-chain 
asset level transparency as an investor can see at a glance what assets, aka NFTs, a pool contains, what has been borrowed against and repaid, what's overdue and so on. And it gives you all this stuff in real time, which is pretty cool, at least or at least going by epochs, which are pretty often. They have something called revolving pools, which is really, really convenient. It says in TradFi, many securitizations are static. A group of investors provides capital to an issuer. The issuer finances the debt and then repays interest and principal of the assets over time as they mature. At the end, investors get their capital back plus the yield. Instead of being a good deal for investors, this, this situation creates unnecessary overhead because they have to reinvest after the pools mature. This also makes it harder for other DeFi protocols to integrate with the centrifuge protocol as they will have to invest in new pools constantly. So to solve this, they're, they're using these revolving pools, which allows the investment in the redemption orders to come in at any time and the assets can be financed and repaid continuously. And the advantages for in, for issuers and investors are as follows. Issuers can finance assets at any time given liquidity in the pools. Investors, including DeFi protocols, can make flexible portfolio allocation decisions without the need to constantly reinvest. And the overhead of setting up and operating the underlying legal structure multiple times is removed. They also have an on-chain NAV, which is net asset volume. So it says the second component to enable revolving pools is on-chain NAV, calculation to support continuous investments and redemptions, accurate pricing for the pool tokens. So they allow you to see everything in, in real time. They have tranches. So you know how you have different kind of bonds, the higher the risk, the higher the APY to compensate for that risk. They kind of have the same kind of thing here with their tranching. And they have their senior pool, their mezzanine pool, and their junior pool. And I think with the junior being the most riskiest, and it allows them to protect against losses. So the more the more risky pool, if there is a loss, there's not enough liquidity or whatever the case is, that pool is the one that'll get affected first. And it makes sense because it's the riskier one and it's paying out the most. All right, now let's talk about the Centrifuge chain. It's actually built on a Polkadot parachain. So it says the Centrifuge protocol is built on Centrifuge chain, a layer one blockchain custom built for RWAs using the Substrate framework, which is the Polkadot's programming language. Key advantage of Substrate includes shared security as a parachain, built-in on-chain governance and forkless upgrades, and trustless bridging with other parachains. So basically these parachains are like separate blockchains that are all kind of connected to each other at the same time. And the advantages are lower transaction costs and increased scalability, the flexibility to develop features that are not possible with the general purpose smart contract blockchain such as ETH. I've talked about the problems with the ETH and the EVM in many videos. Dedicated block space for RWA transactions and then the ability to define transaction ordering. And this is basically ensuring that redemption orders can always be submitted even in highly contested blocks. Speaking of integration, it says here currently most DeFi applications are limited to their respective blockchain ecosystems. They talk about how bridges exist but they're expensive and to be honest they're they could be risky sometimes as well centrifuge provides liquidity pools that allow for direct integration with any general purpose EVM. So they don't just allow you to integrate easily with parachains, but also EVM blockchains as well. And this will just allow them to increase their liquidity. If you don't have a bridge to ETH, at least right now, you're gonna suffer because that's where most of the action is happening. So just by them being able to integrate easily with EVMs, it's gonna make it a lot better for them and their customers because they're probably coming from ETH. I always like to say if blockchains are cities, Ethereum is New York. Now let's talk about the legalities. And I feel like this is really important because they're kind of thinking ahead in terms of regulation. Because that's that's a big problem with these protocols. We don't know how things are gonna be regulated, but they're kind of just operating in a gray area. But it seems like the centrifuge team is thinking proactively. So it says finance in RWAs requires a real world legal structure. The setup for each pool is designed to mirror the protocol structure and the real world relationships between the parties. The templates provided are based on legal structures for asset backed securitizations for many decades. Each pool has a legal entity tied to it, a special purpose vehicle or SPV. It keeps the assets originator's business from the financing activity underlying the pool and ensures the assets in the pool are bankruptcy remote from the asset originator. The operating agreement defines the operations of the SPV. To securitize assets, the legal ownership of the assets is transferred by the asset originator to the SPV. And it gives you everything you have to do in terms of AML, KYC, onboarding, and all that stuff. So you're probably wondering, well, if they're doing this, what if someone doesn't pay? How do they handle defaults? Let's talk about that. It says, as long as a junior tranche exists, write downs and write offs, resulting from defaults in the asset portfolio will be borne by the junior tranche. This will reduce the value of the junior tranche and consequently the token price, resulting in reduced junior returns or even losses for the junior tranche. Again, this is the high risk one. 
As long as all subordination ratios remain intact, the pool continues to function normally, albeit with affected junior returns. So basically the default goes to the people who are in the high risk pools, which makes sense. You know, there's, there's always a risk and they know that risk going into it, or at least they should. All right, now let's get into the tokenomics here. So we talked about how you can use it to vote and all that. They charge transaction fees in the token. Talk about the utility. It includes both standard network functions such as on-chain security and transaction fees, governance. But now let's let's talk about the token supply and the issuance and all that good stuff. So you can see here that the initial distribution created 400 million CFG tokens, which was distributed to the foundation and initial contributors, including core team, investors, and validators. Since Genesis, additional tokens have been minted as rewards for chain security and to incentivize adoption. And you can look here at the distribution. They talk about the token lock ups the governance everything like that let's dive a little deeper if we go to cryptorank.io you know you can pretty much see the same graph but you can see the unlocks because the main thing you want to look for is like i just want to make sure a bunch of tokens isn't getting unlocked so i'm not getting dumped on so you can see here that there's a linear unlock for 48 months it looks like we're about 60 to 65 percent of the way through and this is 20.47 million tokens and then you have another linear unlock here and another one here so this one's represents 11 percent 11 percent and seven percent for so total you're looking at almost 30 percent of tokens linearly being unlocked all the way up until 2026 so that's something to keep in mind and it gives you all the data on this website and so far 68 percent of the tokens have been unlocked the next one will be 0.52 percent you got 10 percent locked and it says 7.2 percent are untracked and then the next unlock is in 22 days march 13th and it'll be 0.52 percent of total supply and 0.57 percent of the market cap or 1.74 million dollars at current prices so now that we've went through all that stuff let's look at how centrifuge stacks up against their competitors and just to see if this is a good time to invest in centrifuge right now all right guys so if you go to rwa.xyz and you hit private credit you can see the top protocols leading the way you can see Centrifuge is number one, and they base it off of active loans. So right now they have $273 million in active loans. That means people collateralized their RWAs and borrowed against it to the tune of $273 million. Total loans is $528 million. Maple did more total, but right now Centrifuge is leading the way. And you guys know we made a video on Maple. Definitely give that a watch. So you can see that this peaked out at $1.5 billion, and we're kind of making our way back up. Guys, we're definitely going to exceed these all-time highs, especially as we go into the bull market and the assets on the balance sheets of these crypto companies balloon. It's going to make them more credit worthy. It's going to make their assets more valuable, which means they'll be able to borrow more money against them. And they're going to go to protocols like this because they can't go to banks. So it's a good time to get into something like this. So you can see they're number one amongst their competitors. Also, if we go to CoinGecko and you look by categories, we type in RWAs. Make sure you hit categories and not the actual cryptocurrencies. Guys, when you are looking for a token to pump, you want to find something that hasn't necessarily found its day in the sun. And you want to find projects that are not in the top 100 that has a high chance of getting there. Real world assets is going to be a huge narrative. It's going to bring in trillions of dollars into crypto over the next few years and decades there isn't even a project in the rwa sector that is in the top 100 and it's going to be some we called out pendle back in november if you guys listen to us you made some good money obviously we talked about maple these some of these protocols are going to be in the top 100 and i have a feeling that centrifuge is and right now they're only 213 even if they get into the top 50 that is a great amount right and right now the market cap is only 301 million dollars and you're looking at a fully diluted valuation of 335 dollars which is not a bad ratio so that means most of the tokens are unlocked but you guys already know that because we just covered that so now you probably wonder how do i buy this scroll down here you can see that these are the major centralized exchanges where you can buy them at but if you want to buy it on a decentralized exchange which I do slash did you want to look for wrapped centrifuge right WCFG you click on that and you scroll down and you can see that you can buy it on coinbase or you can buy it on uniswap and the best pair to buy it with on uniswap is buying it for usdc you may incur some slippage because it's a small amount in the pool you see the volume is low but you'll make up for that in gains once this thing pumps all right guys so now that we've established that they're pretty competitive they're leading away the amongst their peers let's do a platform walkthrough and see how easy the ui is so here we are 
start at centrifuge.io pretty clean site you scroll down they pretty much explain their value proposition how it works and everything like that some partners some articles and if you want to read the documentation you just hit documentation right here let's go ahead and enter app super super simple self-explanatory uh, user interface it shows the pools here so you can tokenize your treasuries real estate bridge loans secure credit structure credit real estate invoices whole whole loans debt facilities so this project is up and coming they're not super built out yet but they still have a pretty high tvl all right so let's click one that's open for investments you click this it gives you the overview all the data you can see the tokens you scroll down here it gives you the info on the issuer you can go to the website and check them out you can download the executive summary which is pretty cool you can see the assets in here which are treasury bills pretty obvious you can see the liquidity right gives you all the data, the cash drag. Another important thing about cash drag, if you see here, right now Centrifuge's cash drag is 0.19%, and that's percentage of idle capital in the protocol. So that means they're using up 99% of the capital, which is really, really good. It would be like if you deposited money in a bank and you're getting a interest rate, but you're not getting the interest rate on all the capital. You'd be like, what the heck, bro? Give me the interest rate on all the capital. So that's good. I can't say that about a lot of other protocols. Going back here, like I said, they give you everything. They give you the reporting. You can export it via CSV, which is pretty cool. And you can look at all of that data for all of the protocols. You have to apply, get KYC. Like let's say you have some machine, you tokenize with the NFT. Once you have the NFT, then you come here and deposit into one of these. Let's say it's a treasury. You are able to prove how much your treasury is worth. And then you can take out a loan and it gives you the APR and all that stuff. You click portfolio to see everything. Obviously, I'm not, I don't have anything, so it's not showing. And then you can get all the access to the on-chain, off-chain voting if you want to do that with your CFG tokens. All right. So for those of you who stuck around to the end, we just finished covering the protocol. I think this protocol is solid. And to answer the question, yes, it is a part of my institutional portfolio. Now, here's the secret that I promise you guys to stick around to the end. The most important thing when it comes to investing is the structure around your investment. So it's one thing to conduct proper fundamental analysis to establish if a protocol is good or worth investing into. But then you want to create a framework around that investment. That includes your take profit strategy and that includes your yield farming strategy. As you know, we're big proponents of yield farming on this channel and especially my personal channel, Crypto Noah. Follow me there. But the surprise is I'm going to release a video showing my exact take profit strategy and I'm going to release a video showing my yield farming strategy for how I can accumulate centrifuge passively so I can earn as much as I can so I can sell it ahead of the next bull market. If there is a yield farming opportunity, if it's enough liquidity, if it's a favorable volume to TVL ratio, I'm going to show you exactly what I would look at or if you want to watch my other videos for Maple or whatever, feel free to do that. Lastly, if you guys want to learn how to do all these things for yourself, we have a flagship course. I think it's the best in the industry and a community of coaches that will hop on live calls. Also do one-on-ones if that's something that you're interested in. Click the link in the description, book a free strategy session, hop on with one of our team members. Ultimately, we'll see if this program is a good fit for you. If it's not, we're happy to point you in the right direction and help you with any questions you may have. So other than that, if you got value from this video, I ask that you subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment, share with a friend. Let me know what your favorite RWA protocol is or which one you want me to cover. I'm trying to go through all of them. This is the narrative that I'm focusing on the most because like I said, I think it's going to bring in the most money and make me the most money as well. So with that, I thank you guys so much for tuning in. I love every single one of you and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and trade safe.